Hi, here's a new web app I've been working on called ShareTime, and it's driven from my need to fairly divide my time among several students who may or may not be working on the same subjects. Um, let's pretend that these are the names of my students that I'm going to work with at one time. And um, so let's say that we have um, just 30 minutes to work together. So I'll paste those names in click Add Students, and now they appear here. So we've got six kids, and their fair share of dedicated attention time would be one-sixth of 30 minutes or five minutes. Um, so if I were to see them one at a time, then they would consume that five minutes in real time. So if I let five minutes pass, this bar will fill. But more likely, a group of them are working together so let's say these three are working together. So now I'll spend 15 minutes with them, which is half of the time period, and they'll each get their five minutes. So you see that they're consuming their five minutes at a one-third rate because they're dividing. Uh, I've divided my attention among the three of them. And then um, let's say Jacob decides to go off and do something else, so he's no longer getting uh, attention, so Sophia and Jaden can continue, and then maybe Daniel joins us. People come and go, and as long as I have checked the students that I'm currently working with, then I can balance things out and make sure that at the end of the 30 minutes or hour or whatever, their bars have filled. Okay, let's see how the program works. There are two important files. There's an HTML file, and then there's Scala code. So you can see, you can recognize some HTML here. Um, here's the share time heading, the H1, and the following paragraph. And then you can see various other elements for the, for the form here and for this input. The Add Students button is here. The styling here is done with Bootstrap, Bootstrap version 4. Um, maybe we should look at the at this um, this template. This row is cloned for each of the students that get added and by default it's hidden and when we clone it, we take that off, which makes it appear. So there's, there's one in here that you can't see, which is this template here. Okay, the Scala code. Well, how can you have Scala code, which is a language that usually runs on the Java virtual machine, not in a web browser, run in a web browser? Well, it's transpiled or it's translated into JavaScript code using something called Scala.js, Scala.js. And um, I'll walk you through some of the code. There's one Scala object, share time, and it has a main method in it that gets called by the JavaScript code. And it calls um, jQuery and tells jQuery that once the page is loaded, that it should call this setup UI. And that's here. And then we need to put the default value into here and then set up a event listener so that when the number is changed in here, like if I change it to, to 90, that the right things happen. See, this changes and the maximums for all of these progress bars change. So how does this work? Well, there's something called, um, there's an element with an ID of period minutes. So we're looking in the HTML for a period minutes, which is this. And here it is. So we get access to this element. And then we set the value of it to period minutes turned into a string. And the default is 60. So that's how the 60 got in there originally. And then we say that whenever this is changed, we run this block of code consisting of these two lines. And the first is to get the value 
that's been typed here, turn it into an integer, and then save it in our field. And then we call adjust for student count. Let's look at what that does. Um, well, we either have students displaying or not. And if we do have some, then we calculate the minutes per student, which shows here. And we set it here. And then for each student, we set the bar maximum. And then we... There's something called stu display. Let's see if we can find that here. That's here. This is invisible by default. This is a bootstrap class. And if we have students, then we remove that class, which makes it show. If we don't have any students, then this whole section doesn't show. And then I'm planning for the future here when I allow users to delete students that have been added. And eventually you could delete them all, and then you'd have none, and then we would want to add that invisible class so that this disappears. Okay, how did we get there? We were here. Then we set an interval so that every second we update things. And the, um, the update method is down below. Uh, but I think before we talk about that, I'm going to look at add students. And that's annotated with this JS export, and that allows the um, HTML JavaScript code to um, call this method. So let's see if we can find where students are added. Here's the add. Here's the form. And on submit, we call add students. That's how that works. And then we return false so that we don't... Um, reload the page. Um, what does add students do? Well, it goes to here and gets the names out. It goes to stu names and gets the names out. And stu names is this text area. And they can be separated by commas on one line. They can be on multiple lines. So we have to split them out of that text area using the split method. And we're splitting on either commas or new line characters. And then um, that gives us an array. And then we go through that array and we trim spaces from the beginning and ends of all elements of the array. And then if that makes any of them empty, then we remove them. So we filter just to keep the non-empty ones. So now names is an array. Then for each of those names, we call add student singular. And then we adjust for the student count, which we've already looked at. And then we set this text area to have a value of an empty string. Let's look now for at add student. That's here. What does it do? It creates a new student object and then adds it to a collection. Um, so let's follow that through. The student class is here. And when we create a student object from the class, we have to give the name of the student. And then what information do we keep for the student? Well, the number of minutes used, whether it's active or not, from the checkbox. And then these three are HTML elements that it needs. The create element method gets called, and it finds that template that I mentioned here and clones it and then removes the ID so that we don't have duplicate IDs. Here's the ID. And then it removes the hidden attribute. And then what do we have to change? We have to put the name in here, and then we have to register an event listener so that when we click on the checkbox, we toggle the active state. So if it wasn't active, we make it active and vice versa. And then we add that, we append that cloned table row to the table. So we've cloned this row, we've plugged in things, and then we append it to here. Okay, that's create element. 
And we got there from here. What else in student? Add portion of shared second. Okay, every second we go and we update the minutes used. And as I mentioned before, if I'm sharing my attention with three students, then they all increase their minutes used at one third of real time rate. So we add to their minutes used the result of taking one minute and dividing it by 60 because we're doing this once each second and then we're dividing that second by the number of active students. Um, while we're here set bar max sets the maximum attribute of the progress bars. Okay so that's share time and you can run it at DaveBsoft.com and in there there's a link to the source code on GitHub. So uh, spread the word if you know people that might be interested in this and I, I welcome feedback. I'd like to make this more useful if I can. I wrote it for myself but if other people can use it that's great and it also can serve as a example of a Scala.js program that I can use with my students and others. So long.